What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Today we're going out on the 72 volt Yasma IN10. Last time we rode it, I was a little bit too hyper-focused on going 70 miles per hour, but I kind of lost track and didn't have much time to test out the other features of the Moxon controller. My buddy Elmer is actually coming down from Maryland. He wants to try out the wheelie function. I got to try it out a little bit last time we took it out, but only in the lowest setting. I think it's like 10 degrees just to make sure that it works. But I'm hoping that I can keep turning it up today, maybe shoot for something like 30 degrees. I might also mess with the controller settings to see if I can turn the power back up a little bit more. Just a quick recap on the bike's powertrain in case you're new to my channel. This is a Moxon controller meant for a Suron Light BX. I got it from Electric RVA. They actually helped me tune it. I'm using a Amorge 72 volt 20 amp hour lithium battery pack that I borrowed from my Tudio. I think it's got a 250 amp peak output. Soshin FW22 motor, and the controller is currently set to 700 phase amps. If you're interested in checking out any of the parts that we use for this project, I'll have the full build list in the description below. You can also get yourself 5% off a Yasma IN10 by using discount code PATOUTDOORS. See how well the wheelie mode functions. It's 10 degrees. Yo, this shit is so fast. That was actually my first time trying that out at 15 degrees. I'm gonna try to get used to that before we switch it over to 20. Let's try that again. Starting to get pretty used to it. I'm gonna keep turning it up as we go. All right, I gotta take a break. I'm gonna let Elmer mess around with this. I'm gonna set it at the lowest wheelie mode, which is just 10, but it is at the highest power mode just so you can power wheelie it. It's gonna feel like a power wheelie that you're essentially chasing because you're going to hold on to the throttle it's going to keep it at the same angle and it's going to keep accelerating but it won't like tilt further back it won't at a certain point it'll stop it'll catch you uh -huh. um but it's kind of soft how it catches you okay so you shouldn't feel it, it's not very jarring in theory the more we turn it up and the more you lean back it should go slower but we'll work our way there yeah. we'll just start at the lowest um angle and go from there. Okay, okay. I mean, just ride it around normally, get used to my bike first. So how it works is it, once I pin it, it'll pick me up or? Yeah, as long as you have to pin it, don't chop the throttle or anything. Okay, and it'll do its thing? Yeah, what I would suggest is you cruise, go five miles an hour, uh -huh. and then just pin it, and then just trust that it'll catch you. <laughs> I'm nervous to try it. <laughs> and then, hey, when you're ready to just let it down, uh -huh. try it for like three seconds and then just twist off the throttle. Okay. And just have a finger on the left brake lever. If something feels off, just let off the throttle or hit the hit the rear brake. <laughs> you know, you got two fail safes there. I know, it's still Worst nervous. case scenario, if, if something feels weird, just hit the rear brake, okay. like on a normal bike. Oh God, <laughs> I'm actually so nervous. Right <laughs> Don't be. Man, he looks so huge on this bike. Oh my God, is this a mistake? Should I not have given him a 14 kilowatt bike right now? I'm scared, man. Is it the power? Yeah, I think it's the power. Like, let I, me see. I let, try to let do it a little bit and it yeah. just... Don't, don't do it a little bit. You have to commit. Oh, that's, that's gonna catch me if I commit, right? I don't know, we'll see. Please. Seems like it's catching. Two, three miles an hour. All right, setting it back up to 20 degrees. Feels pretty good. I think I'm starting to get used to that already. All right, 20 degrees. All right, you ready to give it a shot? Uh, no, but do I have a choice? <laughs> no, dude, I'm out here in the cold. I know you wanted to mess around with this a little bit, and so do I. I haven't really gotten a chance to play with it, so I'm kind of glad we're here for a little. Let's get it done. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Dude, once he just gets it to go up and let it catch once, he's going to learn how to trust it. Whoa. 
What happens if you hop in a self-driving Tesla? I still wouldn't trust it. To be okay. with you. What's the what's the the no driver Uber? The Waymo? Yeah, I love Waymo. I, I still wouldn't trust that. I'd cancel the ride and get a new one. Do you trust AI? You were just bragging to me about how efficient AI is the other day. <laughs> Think about this just like that. Okay. This is like an AI wheelie. <laughs> oh. There you go. That's a start. <laughs> well, it's good that he's at least starting to trust the controller a little bit. Because I've never done it. Uh huh. 10 degrees feels like a oh, fucking, you I, know? I understand, but like, see how once you let it catch you, yeah. and you know for a fact that it will catch you, then you feel more comfortable the next time. Yeah. Dude, after that first time where you just felt a blip of it, uh huh. You did it three times in a row and didn't even hesitate. My turn for a little bit, hopping on, 20 degrees. Am I ready to turn it up to 25? Screw it, 25. Whew. Maybe not, let's try it up, 25 degrees. Dude. I think I'm getting more used to it. So as, as I do like six passes successfully, without feeling like I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna turn it up five degrees. Now I'm glad that I went with this option rather than getting one of those antic bikes or the wheelie fun bikes since it doesn't have uberly fat tires so you still have to balance it like a regular Yamoto. I'm just gonna try to keep doing that faster and faster. I'll shoot for another long one here. You see that last one? Yeah. It was it was gonna maintain it, but you let off. Scared, yeah. That's the thing, I have to get over that fear. Which I'm getting better. I, I can feel myself getting better at it. Oh well, yeah, dude. The first 10 minutes, I was like, I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> no, that, that is fun. I definitely would want to try it out again, maybe later or whatever. Uh -huh. But definitely would love to try it again and try and get, you know, but. But really, the main reason why I got this controller for this bike is to really turn the power up to 900 phase amps and hit that 80 miles per hour. But it's obviously super nice to have this feature. This thing has reverse uh. <laughs> and I can put it in park uh -huh. by holding this button and it actually locks the motor. Oh. But the reverse thing I thought was so weird. Like <laughs> I've never ridden a pit bike that has reverse. Oh, that is too much fun. Ah, oh, oh, chain drop. Oh man. Dude, you know how dangerous that would have been? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to put Loctite on that front sprocket. I don't want that happening again. Damn, well that was fun while it lasted. That is my fault though. I just installed the Sochian motor on the bike without checking the sprocket bolt. So hey, if you're getting yourself a Sochian FW22 motor, make sure you take that bolt off and put some Loctite on it. Otherwise you're gonna be stranded. Good thing I'm not alone. We'll get it back on the road. I thought we completely lost the motor sprocket, but luckily it fell on the skid plate and it's got a little lip here in the back. So it was just sitting at the bottom of the tray. I definitely added some blue Loctite on the sprocket bolt and torqued it down quite a bit. Since this controller relies on regen a lot to maintain the wheelie, I highly suggest you use Loctite on that bolt. We're actually about to head out to Let's Roll in Lancaster, Pennsylvania to check out some of their bikes. It just started raining heavily outside and I think it's gonna rain all the way from Virginia to Pennsylvania all day. So I just wrapped up the front end of my bike with saran wrap, which I know is completely unnecessary because the controller has a really good waterproof rating, but I'd rather play it safe since it's gonna be a six hour round trip. Be. 
Bonnell. This I'm super interested in. Should I get one of these? What is it like? How much is this thing? I mean, sounds wicked though, but that, my, for that price, I'm going with SR, bro. Man, I have been waiting to ride one of these for months. I went to four bike shops in California and nobody had a Bonnell. As it turns out, just a few hours away from me here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, they have it in stock. They also have Ultra Bs. They got the full lineup of E-Ride products. They're also an Electro & Co dealer. They got RTRs, they got Alta Sigma. They pretty much have everything that I'm usually looking for. It's too bad that they don't have a store in Virginia, though I think they are opening one somewhere in Maryland. Yo, this thing has a lot more torque than I anticipated. And it looks like a regular mountain bike. And the mid-drive motor is so tiny that it's kind of unsuspecting. Oh yeah, it's got torque. Yeah, I'm glad they went with a full twist throttle. No thumb throttles or half twist. I think those feel really cheap. And the brakes on this thing are insane. Suspension's so plush. Kind of what you'd expect from a downhill mountain bike. Uh -huh. I wonder how fast that was. 33 miles an hour. Oh yeah, I think I gotta get me one of these. I really like this though. I feel like I'm just riding my YT mountain bike, but I don't have to pedal. And I get to go over 30 miles an hour. I think I can get used to this pretty quickly. All right, let's see how fast that was. Yeah, 35 miles per hour for a mountain bike that nobody cares that I'm riding on the sidewalk. And I really like this minimalistic looking display. I think it looks super clean. I actually ordered myself a CYC e-bike conversion kit, which is essentially the same powertrain as what's on the Bonnell, but it's been seven weeks and I still have not received it. If I still don't have it in another two or three weeks, I might just give up on my mountain bike project and just buy a Bonnell. Yo, shout out to Let's Roll Lancaster for letting me take out the Bonnell. It didn't just sell me on the bike, but it sold me on the shop. Dude, thanks for letting me ride that. That is too much fun. That's my it, the Altus. What is this thing? Re. The, the re what is that? Re I don't really know too much about these serpent. Like the things. Well, you see the ser serpents coming out with two new bikes next this year. Uh, don't they already meet the MV7? This one, they come out one that looks just like this, but it comes with turn signals, VIN. You can only have one bike. I like like riding trails, so me, I'm gonna go probably you ride three zero. What about you? I'm a Ventus kind of bull, bro. All right, All the way what about two bikes? One mini and one big bike. Altus has a smaller bike coming out in about two weeks, Delta. Is it smaller than the... It's gonna be like this size. Okay, okay. Maybe even a little bit bigger than that. With a 1714? It's gonna be 1714. Okay. It's like 67 miles an hour. And then Arctic Leopard, so you can this bike, they're coming out with a version that has 1714 too. Minis are taking over, huh? Yeah. A mini. mini and a big bike. What is it? BTB and E-Ride Mini. E-Ride Mini. Oh, your bike. <laughs> you do love E-Ride Mini. You love it. I put a thousand miles on it already. Damn. If you hop on the Mini right now, you can test it out. The throttle curve feels like exactly like a big bike. So when you hop on that little bike, it's going to feel like it doesn't have no play or nothing. Like, it's just perfect, bro. Those are some big foot bags, right? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Dude, it's like safety. Like, you got to jump and shit. You go to the rock. Rock. You just land, bro. You never miss. These are pillow tracks. This is my sponsor right here. These are basically like stump foot pegs. So say like if you're doing tricks and stuff, you got this big old landing platform. So you never miss. You gonna let me ride this? Go ahead, bro. I just want to see what it's like for a different mini. You know, Cause I got like. You never rode the E-Ride mini? No. Hey, this shit has reverse. Yeah. Hold it in. Yo, what? I don't have reverse. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> This thing's pretty funny. His aftermarket bar on there makes it feel so big. All right, so there seems to just be two different modes, eco and sport. I'm gonna stick with sport. All right. Uh, 
Uh, the stock suspension feels pretty smooth on this thing, but it just feels a little bit cramped in comparison to a few bikes that I've ridden recently. Though the handlebar kind of makes up for it. I can see why he put a riser bar on there. That's probably one of the next things I'm gonna do with my Yasma. I don't know, I'm still undecided about what bigger bike I wanna get. I've wanted an Ultra B all year, but now it seems like so many bikes came out just last week. Comment below if you have a suggestion for me for something like the Ultra V, if not better. But I'm hoping for something less than eight grand. All right. Now that dude can wheelie. You can't mox in that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can do a hand drag, please. Dude, I gotta learn how to ride like these guys. <laughs> I got it one, bro. You like that shit? I love it. I more than like it. <laughs>